Now, to deal with a couple of tools, you can use a shovel. This is your garden variety garden rake. You can also use some hand tools, a couple trowels and a small little hand rake that you can use to keep the garden flat and groomed. And also they're very good at keeping, you know, planting. One tool I don't have here is something called a hoe. And what that basically is, it's a flat piece of metal. It's like a, you got a arm like that, but it's a flat piece of metal, like a square. And you can use it to create a divot in the, like a line in the, like a, in the soil. You could create a line and it helps you cr keep your rows straight. And you can allow, it allows you to plant seeds a lot easier and then bury it faster. Um, one thing you could use is a, you know, my father used to have a, used to have like a couple of wooden stakes with string tied across it or tied around it. And it was good. You could stretch out a good 30, 40 feet and you could use these stakes to kind of also, as you're going up and down your row to mark your rows and keep them straight better, keep them more straight. You could tie string around these two, you know, two of these stakes if you wanted to and it helps you keep your rows in a straight row. Kind of a little, you know, ing ing ingenious idea and whatnot. One of the important things about gardening is where you're going to place your garden. And one of the locations I used last year which I mentioned in a previous video was over here, but some of the problems that I had with this was too much shade, not enough sunlight, the trees and leaves over here kind of fell off and the seeds fell off into the garden and overall it was just a generally bad location. So I decided to, with permission from my landlord, to move my garden over here, which gets about seven to eight hours worth of sun a lot of gardens need about seven, eight hours of direct sun. And it is a typical garden needs a lot of sun in order to make the soil the right temperature and also, you know, help the plants grow. So this was about, uh, I'm going to say 10 by 16 feet. We had over here, we had a lot of brush as I mentioned in previous videos that we cleaned up and some of the video was shown of how I was kind of cleaning, cleaning this up and one of the re and one of the advantages of cleaning this up was actually I kind of gave myself an additional hour or so of sunlight because the shade was so thick that I was able that I had to I wasn't sure if I was gonna get a lot more sun so I still might clean a little bit more up with with permission from my landlord if he'll let me and might be able to get more sunlight for another an additional half hour 45 minutes to keep the sun shining on my plants and garden because having a warm soil is important for the germination of seeds and it's also good because the a lot of the plants survive on a process called uh, on sunlight so they, with chlorophyll and whatnot um, you can arrange your garden any it's in, uh, any way you want once you've picked the location. A lot of sun, easy access to you know water, but you can arrange your garden any way you want. So how I did mine this year was tomatoes down here at this end because this is where you're going to get the most of the sun. I felt in the middle here I have cucumbers and several types of beans with the trellises that are going to climb up. I have also planted lettuce herbs, shard, and different types of overall lettuce in this area because I figured this would be the fastest and easiest to grow. I've also grown, I'm also growing radishes as well. They're a quick grower so if something needs more space the radishes will go pretty quick and I won't need to have as many when I need more space. 
Um, down here, I have planted pumpkins, watermelons. I have planted corn, actually, as for the first time in several years. I haven't planted corn in quite some time. But I've got several different varieties of corn in here, some that are probably going to grow six, seven, eight feet from, based on the variety from what I've read. I've also got watermelon and some types of muskmelon and Amish, house melon, and I'm not sure what else I put, but this is kind of how I arrange my garden. So, I mean, you can arrange any way you want. Typically, we I used to have um, corn at the ends with the pumpkins at the end. That way, if they need to go off into the yard a little bit, that way they can have room to grow. We'd also leave a lot of space with tomatoes. I didn't grow peppers this year because they, we haven't, we had so many from last year that we just decided to not have them this year. So, like I said, location's important, and then arranging your garden is important. Tomatoes need a lot of sunlight, as well as pumpkins and squash. Actually, I did plant a, squ a couple squash over here as well. Summer squash, and I believe uh, winter squash as well. So you can arrange any way you want, but you can have like a lot of the plants in the middle. Um, you can cut down a lot of the space on the uh, t uh, cucumbers because they grow up. So usually when I was younger, we used to let the, let the cucumbers go across. So it would be, you know, you'd have a lot on, on the floor, on the uh, ground. So if I had the cucumbers going up, I could save a lot of space. So something to think about. Okay, this is your standard rototiller. It's a machine that you, you can use to create gardens, grind up gardens. It's got uh, blades at the bottom here that chop into the ground and you can usually dig pretty deep in order to get the ground chopped up and get dug deep and loose up the soil underneath because that's important for uh, a, lot of, a lot of roots for their seeds to be able to, they can go downward. So it's like, it's like, as you can see, they're kind of chopped like teeth and blades. So this is just your standard rototiller. Um, they come in different sizes. The one my grandma used to have is, was only like three bladed, I believe. Might have been even two bladed, but it was smaller than this one. This one's uh, 13 by 22 by 24. So it can cover a lot of space. So, you know, it can easily do... Uh, a 10 by 16 and a half size garden very quickly. I mean, the hardest part would be just kind of cutting through the grass and, you know, chopping that up, making sure that's the sod is all cut, cut up and ground up. Plus it makes it allows the uh, grass to kind of rot and serves as a type of soil amendment you could use because it's, you know, basically using as fertilizer as it rots. And then you can also, you know, as you go through, you can also put in cow manure, chicken manure, and lime, which uh, raises the pH of the soil a little bit, and is good for peppers because it kind of acts as a sort of a sort of soil sweetener. So something to think about when you're gardening, you know, when you're putting in manure, it's a good way to mix in the soil. So again, this is just your standard um, rototiller. And here you have the gas. You gotta make sure it's always on a full tank. This button is for the speed, goes down if you push it down. It's for slow, and then up, it goes faster. This is the choke. The choke basically allows you to kinda jump start a little bit, and allows you to help start the machine if it's been sitting around for a couple weeks, or if you're starting in the season or something like that, it's a, you know, move when you start to rototill. So you push that in, push this up, and then you give it a crank. This little hand crank right here, usually a couple, three cranks. This particular model, um, which is, you know, a Honda GC165.0, a couple, three cranks from what I've had in the past, and it starts right up typically. It might, if it's been sitting around all winter, it might take three, four cranks. So, something to think about. Um... This is the handle to push it backwards if you get stuck or you need to back up and hit another spot, hit the same spot again. These, this 
lever right here is to push it forward to give it the momentum forward and it engages the blades to push it forward so essentially that's how you kind of operate a general rototiller standard rototiller um, spark plugs here if you need to clean a spark plug oftentimes sometimes if, it, if it's an older rototiller you might need to clean the rot uh, you know clean or replace the spark plug to put oil in it which I've actually never had to do it so far which I think I'm pretty sure this is where you have to put the oil in in terms of draining it I'm not sure how to drain it but if you need to put oil in it you can put it here you can unscrew this and it should work and that's it that's your how to operate a basic rototiller